we're here to talk to you about DX01. We're going to do this in two parts. I want to give you an in-depth uh, view of the camera itself. A lot of innovation, innovation went into it, and we're going to talk about that in detail. And then it's going to be my pleasure to, uh, to welcome up uh, one of the world's leading, most accomplished photographers and a dear friend, uh, John Stanmeyer. Well, DX01 has been designed specifically to address those concerns. So it provides instant sharing of all your photos. It allows you to capture absolutely stunning portraits. This is an area where it really excels, and it takes incredible uh, images in, uh, in extreme low light. The first, of course, is incredibly high quality images. So 20.2 megapixel sensor. But even more important than that, in working with professional photographers, what we've heard back from them time and time again is that it, it holds the details in the shadow area and in the highlights uh, incredibly well. It's also professional in the sense that the app, the companion app that controls the camera, the iOS com companion app, is quite sophisticated. And the idea is that it's designed to provide all manner of controls that you'd find in the highest end digital SLR, but in, uh, in this iOS device. It's also professional in that, as David mentioned just a minute ago, that it captures in, uh, in RAW. And so the camera has its own micro SD slot. And uh, the cameras that we typically use, we outfit with a SanDisk Extreme 64 gigabyte card, which, uh, which gives us tons and tons of storage capacity. So that's the professional part. As far as connected, uh, you've heard, starting to hear this term now that it is, in fact, a connected camera. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean, first of all, that it has a physical connection on it. So it actually literally connects directly to your iPhone or your iPad. But more important than that, when we say connected, what we mean is that it's connected to the rest of the world. So that the moment you take a photo without you having to do anything at all, you can tap the share button and you have direct access to all of the, the different photo sharing services that you use today with photos that you capture with your, with your iPhone's built-in camera. It's also connected in a different sense, so that if you're out in the field and you want to learn a little bit more about the camera, you have access to the full interactive online user manual. And in fact, if you, uh, if you tap getting started in support, depending on the hours of the day, you can have access to uh, a live support agent. So you literally chat with a live support agent, get some tips while you're out in the field. So this really represents uh, the future. And uh, this is what we mean when we're talking about a professional quality connected camera. So one of the things I want to do just over the next few minutes is go in depth on the design and architecture of the camera and explain what the thought process was. So as I mentioned, it's been designed to pair exclusively with the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, we worked very closely with Apple's MFI group. And because of that direct connection, the camera becomes one with the iPhone and the iPad. It becomes one with the Apple ecosystem. So that means if you're at home and you take a lovely portrait with the, with the camera, uh, you can post it to Instagram directly. If you're out on the street, you still have that same capability. If you're in the middle of the woods, it doesn't really matter where you are, take the photo. If you like it, you have the ability to share it immediately. And not just through one service, say, be it Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, but literally through every service supported by Apple's iOS. There's been some questions in the field about how do you hold it, right? There are a number of different ways to hold it. I can hold it like this. I can hold it with two hands. I, this swivels. The connector swivels plus and minus 60 degrees. There's flex circuitry inside there that allows us to swivel it. It also features, by design, a very compact lithium-ion battery. So in order to keep this design as small as possible, we, we opted to design in a 750 milliamp hour lithium ion battery that fits right about here in the, uh, in the interior of the casing. Now, every ounce of that, that juice in the battery is precious. And so in studying photographers for the last couple of months and how they use it in the field, we've implemented some sleep-wake cycles. So if you're, if you're using the camera and it goes idle for a period of 50 seconds, it immediately goes into a sleep mode. And to, to wake it up and shoot again, you just tap on the display, as you would expect, and you're back shooting again. So we're trying to make really, really good use of the battery power. When you're actually viewing the image in the viewfinder of the camera, you are, in fact, streaming HD video to the iPhone. So we are, we are capturing HD video, encoding it, and streaming it across the lightning connector to the display. That's how you actually get to see the image 
that you're capturing with the camera. So it's streaming HD video full time. If you were to not let it go to sleep and use it continuously, you'd get anywhere from an hour and a half to, to two hours worth of uh, shooting time on it, which may not sound like a lot, but it's been designed as a companion camera for what is already a very capable camera in your iPhone. Being completely transparent here and upfront, if you go out where light is prevalent and you take a photo of something like the Empire State Building, the Golden Gate Bridge in this case, you take it with your iPhone 6 Plus or 6S Plus and you take the same photo with your DXO1, to the layperson, there are very few differences. There's a difference in the aspect ratio between the two and there's higher resolution in the, of the 20 megapixels in the DX01 and slightly different color rendering, but apart from that, for the layman, the images are gonna look somewhat similar. So the iPhone takes excellent photos, landscapes, panoramas outside. Where the DX01 really comes into play and where it benefits you is when it comes to portraits and low light. So if you look at images, like an image like this taken with the iPhone 6 Plus, the skin tones look a little bit awkward. It doesn't, just doesn't look as, as appealing. You put on the DX01, you compose the shot, you get that, that nice, sharp detail in the eyes and the face, but a, that shallow depth of field with a beautiful bouquet in the background. This is a, a photo taken under exactly the same controlled lighting conditions. This is with the iPhone 6 Plus. And you can see the skin tones are, he kind of looks like a Dorito, and uh, forehead is blown out a bit. Very same photo taken with the DX01. Beautifully rendered flesh tones. Highlights are perfectly handled, so huge difference. If you think about it, as you, as you walk around the city and you look at, at Apple's massive worldwide billboard campaign, you know, shot on the iPhone, they're gorgeous images. You see images of sunsets and mountains and rivers. You don't necessarily see portraits of people on those billboards, right? Because the sheer physics of it, the small sensor size, and the ca small camera lens are not really optimized necessarily for portraits. And that's where the DX01 comes into play. And then the second area is in extreme low light situations. So this was when I was in London uh, this summer and I visited uh, Churchill's War Rooms in uh, Whitehall. And uh, they're all preserved as they were. Shoot that with an iPhone 6 Plus. Take the DX01 out, attach it, take the very same photo with the DX01. It's as if somebody turned on the overhead lights. Same thing here. This is at a church in Paris, uh, Madeleine, in a very deep, dark recess of the church with the iPhone 6 Plus and the very same image captured with the DX01. So incredible detail and phenomenal low light capabilities. So this is a typical setup for a landscape photographer where you're mounting the iPhone or the iPad to your tripod. The DX01 is simply attached to the side firmly. It's not going to go anywhere. And in the latest software update, we actually modified the firmware so that you can connect to an external juice pack. So in this case, I've got this the micro USB cable connected to a Jackery Giant juice pack. And I can actually shoot while I'm, while I'm charging. So shoot while charging. So there, you can just let it run for hours at a time. When it comes to sensitivity, We've talked a little bit about its capabilities in extreme low light. Well, how is that possible? So if we look inside of the camera, first of all, you've got the sensor that I just mentioned. So it's a 20.2 megapixel, one inch backside illuminated sensor, which is 6.6 .6 times larger than the iPhone's camera sensor. So considerably larger than the camera sensor in the iPhone. In fact, the size of the pixels is almost double that of the, the new sensor in the iPhone 6S and 6X Plus. So 2.4 micron pixel size versus 1.22 uh, microns. So bigger pixel buckets mean you have the ability to capture more light, of course. The lens is a custom design by DxO, by our image scientists. It's got six spherical elements, and uh, it's got a six-bladed iris. So it'll close down to f11, and it'll open up to a maximum aperture of f1.8. That's an f1.8 aperture versus f2.2 of, uh, of the iPhone camera. Take those three things together, the size of the sensor, the size of the pixels in the sensor, and the speed of the lens, and that equates to having 10 times the sensitivity of the iPhone camera, 10 times, which amounts to 3.3 full stops of additional exposure. 
the app has been designed to be uh, incredibly powerful and yet uh, very, very intuitive. So what you have on the left-hand side when you go into the advanced modes like program, aperture priority, speed, shutter speed priority, or full manual, is you have your controls on the left. Tapping on those opens up the individual controls that you can just dial in specifically. In the overlay buttons on the right, you have the ability to easily switch between your capturing formats, JPEG, RAW, Super RAW, your built-in timer, two and 10 seconds, and the flash. So a really, really elegant application that allows you to set your ISO, to set the aperture where you want it, get a beautiful bouquet in the background and capture some stunning portraits uh, similar to this. And then there's this other format you may have heard about that we call Super RAW. So this is, this is an innovation developed by our image scientists. When you tap and you engage Super RAW, when you depress the shutter, instead of capturing one RAW, you're actually capturing four full resolution RAWs at the same time in very quick succession. So it blasts off four RAWs at full exposure. They're all exposed exactly the same. So it's not like HDR where they're bracketed differently. They're, bra they're the same exposure. We then use the very latest in spatial and temporal noise reduction to actually remove the noise. So we're not only analyzing thousands of neighboring pixels to determine what's part of the image and what's noise, we're looking at noise between the images themselves as well. And the super raw image processing is accomplished on the companion desktop software. And the desktop software, as this gentleman asked me earlier in the day, uh, runs on both Mac and PC. Uh, we've added in, in version 1.2, advanced controls and video capture. Right now, the video is automatic. We have automatic mode. We have 1080p, 30 frames per second, and we have super slow-mo, 720p at 120 frames per second, but just auto uh, with EV bias, plus minus three stops. We're adding in all c controls, shutter speed, shutter angle, uh, f-stop, ISO, et cetera and video capture. And the other thing that I, that I forgot to mention is with because this lightning connector is universal, you can actually flip it around so that the lens is facing you. So you're looking at the display and the lens is facing you to take a selfie. And we actually use the, the display as a soft natural fill light. Uh, that was actually illuminated. Her face in the dark was actually illuminated by this soft natural fill light from the, from the iPhone's display itself. Today, we only capture selfies in still mode. Uh, with version 1.2, we're adding uh, selfies in all modes, whether it's program, aperture, speed, priority, et cetera, or, uh, and, and uh, video selfies as well, which would be great for video bloggers. I wanted to, to, to really use this camera, the one in a way that I really use a camera. Uh, I want to deal with logistics and problem solving. And what I did on this assignment, uh, I, went to a, I wanted to go to a place I'd never been before. So I went to a Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I'm a publisher. We're all publishers. And so this compendium here is I'm publishing and I'm screaming in the highest quality possible. And I can do it in the steps of Kyrgyzstan uh, in a format that, that, that is like a 35 millimeter DSLR with, again, the quality and the, and, and, and the compaction. I love photographing wide open. You know, details everywhere. It's just astonishing. Uh, incredibly complex light that I would never be able to work in with just the camera that's in the iPhone. Uh, backlit, sun setting, uh, steam coming up, she's making tea, all the detailed layers. I'm even astonished when a DSLR can do it, and I have it right now in my pocket, in my hand. And I love very dark photography. It's a simple picture, but I love these moments of uh, her, her hair was dyed red. It picks up the red colors. I love the coolness of it. I didn't really do much adjusting with it, uh, but phenomenal dynamic range in an incredibly complex lit situation. Look at the detail in her eyes. It's, it's all there. And this is where the one is just off the charts. Uh, this was my yurt uh, for two nights, uh, way up in the mountains, and literally the Milky Way uh, right before me. Um, get a load of this. Uh, 12,000 ISO, 2.8. Look at this. It's just nothing less than, than gobsmackingly off the top. I couldn't see all this with my eye. I could see the Milky Way. I could, knew it was there. But when that frame came off after my little Bluetooth button was pushed, and I go, oh my god, 
Oh my goodness. Uh, and, and even on my DSLRs, I use the monitor. They're so small on a DSLR, so don't try to think you're going to edit on the back of a DSLR. You can actually start to edit on real estate this size. Uh, but I use it as a light meter. So now I actually have it as a light meter, and I can actually, the screen's large enough that I can edit in field, uh, and, and again, be a publisher in the middle of nowhere. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online, or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.